Hi, Manuel. Hi. Um, Rob and Destiny are not going to be able to join today. So um, I have been given hosting duties temporarily for the day. So um, I hope I behave well. <laughs> All right, so also we always follow the code of conduct and we're equally and mutually respectful of one another. That's our rules, they always have been. Um, so I, I don't think we have any new faces today. Everybody knows each other, I think, right? Okay, all right. No new faces, Catherine. Did you want to well, say before we get rolling? I think Andrew is joining for the first time the meeting, so he is kind of a new life face, not a new face on Slack. So I don't know if he wants to say a few words and introduce himself. Hmm. Yeah, Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Andrew. Hi. My name is Andrew. I get called DC. I'm from Austin and um, I've been in tech for a lot of years. Um, but until recently, I decided to switch focuses and I've been doing a lot of, you know, just varied work, but I'm, I'm narrowing my focus quite a bit. And um, in the position I'm in now is with internet cybersecurity. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I need to sign more slowly, it's fine. Yeah, I'm in security um, and I have been for a while. So um, I'm in a place of um, moving forward with my own in internet security firm. So that's happening. And um, it's my first meeting with you all. And um, I've talked with everybody on Slack for a while, um, but it's nice to meet you in person for the first time and put a face to a name. So um, thanks for having me and we can go ahead with the meeting. Great, wonderful, welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have you on the team. Look forward to working with you and um, sharing our experiences with each other. And if you have any ideas, we welcome that. Join us in um, coming up with new ideas going forward. And um, in future meetings, um, if, if you have cybersecurity, that is, uh, that's some good experience that we'd like to hear about. We're interested in what you do. If you wanted to um, give us a brief presentation on what you do, we're, we'd be very interested in that. We'd, we'd like that. We can discuss it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I love educating people. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Great. That's great. All right. Next up, a couple weeks ago, I guess. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we were in Paris. We were at KubeCon and um, so much happened. What a great week. What Paris was amazing. So um, yeah, got to see Catherine and Rob and um, um, Anastasia and Martin and um, let's, that's hard to say his name. Sandeep was there and um, what a great experience. And um Oh, and Emmanuel was there too. Um, I'm sorry, I, I missed you there for a second. Yeah, um, you weren't there all week with us, sadly, but you were there with us a couple of days, so it was great seeing you. And um, hopefully the next uh, KubeCon, um, let's see, huh, where's that again? Where will it be? Oh, yeah, yeah, in London. The next European one will be in London. So hopefully um, we can uh, see some, some of you and some new faces there as well, and we can all meet in person again. But anyway, backing up to Paris, um, a lot happened. It was, it was a lot of important stuff that went on. Um, we had six talks. Um, was that right, Catherine? And then, yeah, and yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, six talks um, on varying topics. And you can look at the agenda and see the different topics that we covered, and Catherine posted that. And um, let's see, there were five interviews that went on and I never even saw all those. I thought we had maybe two, but five? That's incredible. Yeah, just incredible. So yeah, overwhelming. All of it was so overwhelming. Five, wow. Um, and then we had a couple of community activities. Um, we hosted 
um, an open gathering um, with hearing people where they could come and join us and have a deaf chat, learn some signs. And um, it was a tremendous experience. We had a great variety of people and it was a really good experience. And we had a lot of hearing people come. I felt really, you know, it just, it really impacted me because there were a lot of people there and um, we had to explain everything over and over because people kept showing up, but um, it was great. And uh, we were talking about how to improve this going forward at future conferences and um, more visibility for the deaf and hard of hearing working group in the future and um, being more ready for the next KubeCon in terms of the visibility piece. Let's see, another thing. Catherine, remind me, um, we had, I'm gonna get it backwards. I'm gonna say it wrong, but first or second sign language course, the fun course that we had, what, what did we call that? Uh, it was the first time we had it where we had a, invited a bunch of hearing people to join us and teach them a little sign. And um, it was an open space discussion. What was the exact name of that, Catherine, do you recall? Well, one was the sign language crash course. And the second one was the open space discussion, was, which is what you just described, right? It was the, uh, a round table discussion about accessibility. And the crash course was more of a fun, interactive thing for people to learn a few signs and Basically, both activities. But it was in the same act. It was in the same location in the center in the expo center, right? Yeah, but a different day, it's different days. Oh, okay. So okay. much happened that Milat forgot. I must have missed that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when we I, we were practicing something on one day. <laughs> You missed one. Oh, you missed one, actually. Yeah. I don't know when you were the only one who was like gone and we were like, where is me lad? And you came very late. I don't know which one it was, but you missed one activity. Yeah. Yeah. Don't but yeah, a lot know. going on. Yeah. Um, okay. The kiosk. We hosted a kiosk and um, I really kind of wanted some feedback like up here, but there's not a lot of people that were here. Okay, Anastasia is not here and Sandeep's just coming on, but I was hoping to get some feedback on that. One bit of feedback that I, hi Sandeep. Hi, thanks for joining us, glad to see you. Hi everybody, hi. Um, the kiosk, um, I, I will let Sandeep talk about that since he's here. Um, do you have any feedback on that, Sandeep? I mean, I thought it was a great experience. Terrific to meet a bunch of new people. Um, just get to interact with everybody. And um, one that was the thing that was a little bit challenging was trying to juggle all the time with all the people switching in and out. Um, it just felt it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to be. Um, having to, you know, run to practice sessions and come back to the kiosk. And, you know, it was, there was just felt like there was a lot going on and go and see somebody else's presentation. It felt like a lot of running to and fro. And, um, but um, maybe we need to improve um, the flexibility on the time or something. I don't know. So that everybody can go prepare for their stuff and make their presentations and all of that. So um, there was a lot of, Hey, I have to go. Oh, I'm back. Oh, Hey, I have to go. You know, there was a lot of that kind of thing happening there. That's just my feedback. My two cents. Um, I don't know. Sandeep, did you want to add anything? Um, your experience at the kiosk, how you felt like it went, what do you have anything fun to add about that? Uh, Milad, you have too much put all the points. Uh, I'm guilty of not spending much time in the kiosk, actually. Uh, maybe because it was like some time between like practicing and then some time uh, like uh, maybe going through like all of the, going through all of the sponsor boosts and all. But I think 
the way the people love the comments, the way people love the comments on the Slack, I think we did well. We did very well. <clears throat> Maybe yes, Catherine, you want to say something? Yeah, Catherine, did you want to add? Yeah, I don't have any comments because I was working at the Linkerd kiosk, but I was actually hoping to hear from you more about the interactions with the hearing people, the community is like, what, what, how do you think was that? I mean, because my, I always thought that it's really important for people to have the opportunity to meet deaf people, to ask them questions, to have those interactions, which is why we did all these activity things. So it's like, I'm really curious about your interactions with people, your conversations. How did you feel that went? And that question, of course, is for Milad, Emmanuel, and Sandy. Uh, okay, Catherine, that's a good question. So I think I interacted with quite a few people. And so one of them was an AWS machine learning hero, Jamie Brookison. So she just came and then she wanted to know what it was all about and had a really nice interaction. And then some, I think another one was the parent of a deaf child. So, I mean, speaking about my experience, um, I mean, for personal feedback for me is that I just wish I could have spent much more time at the booth, maybe much more interacted with a bit more folks. That's the personal feedback for me. But apart from that, uh, what all the people we met, what all the people we talked, everyone really felt good. And like all of the posts that went in LinkedIn, a lot of hearing allies are also joining it. Like my friend Shivangi, she has been with this for a long time. But then I did not happen to tell her about this. But then she ran over LinkedIn post and then she joined as an ally. So I think we got like a lot of traction, I'd say. Maybe Emmanuel wants to ask something. No, okay. <laughs> I think you're, you're on mute, Catherine. Oh, yeah, I realized. <laughs> So overall, a good, uh, I mean, it's something that we should try to uh, do again, I would assume, right? Yeah. Um... Uh, yes, 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 we should definitely, definitely do it again. Definitely. 100% we should do it again. Okay, because all these things that we've done are basically things where we sign up for, right? And I jumped on every single opportunity and signed us up for everything so, because I, I thought, like, first of all, let's try it. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to get, like, your feedback. Like, should we do it again? Should we try to do all these things? I think, I think, well, I always imagine that the most valuable thing is actually having these one-on-one -on -one interactions with people like speaking and so on is important for visibility, but really to change people's minds, right? And 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 making, sensibilize them for accessibility. For that, you really need to have like one-on-one -on -one interactions, people to meet people. Um, so um, I hope that we've accomplished a little bit of that, changing some minds every single KubeCon maybe, then bit by bit will change the community, hopefully. At least that's my hope. Uh, Catherine, I would say we accomplished a lot, lot more than what we expected, a lot more. Maybe I think the, the issue was like, I had like a couple of sessions that I wanted to attend and those sessions clashed with my exit time allocated, allocated and the both. So I think I need to do better planning at the KubeCon, like which sessions I want to attend and manage my time slot for the booth. I think I did not do a good job there. Like one or two sessions I wanted to attend class head on with my time at the booth. Yeah. I think that most people didn't really know what to expect either, right? Because it was the first time we're doing all that. And so uh, maybe next time as people sign up for their 
um, shifts at the booth, as you said, it's just like looking at the schedule. What do I want to attend? I know Anastasia did that, but maybe some other people left it for the last minute and then already had signed up for that. And then same thing for um, scheduling dry runs with, uh, uh, with their panel discussions, right? Like trying to do that at times. So it's a lot of scheduling to do, of course, uh, in planning, but um, I think again, it was the first time for everyone, and I think like no one really knew maybe what the booth looks like, what to expect. So hopefully next time, uh, yeah, we can plan better because we know what to expect basically. Uh, yeah, and maybe maybe we can keep like a smaller time set, and maybe like if we have more people instead of like one and a half hour Milan and Sunday, we can have them for a smaller time duration. Wouldn't that help? Whatever works for people, right? Like, I mean, if we had small, if we had, it always depends like how many people are actually joining, right? Uh, we can always do more shifts and shorter shifts, but then also it's difficult because you have to remember to run that, that might be more running, right? Because if it's a lot longer shift, it's like maybe just one or two and then just go there and stick there for an hour and a half. If you have more shorter shifts, then there is a lot more running. So it's like it just depends. We can we can experiment, but uh, whatever works for uh, most, I would say we can discuss. And, and now it's easier to discuss that, you know, before a conference because everyone knows what it looks like. So I think it's easier to determine um, the best approach. And yes, I, I agree with you, Catherine. I think uh, it needs like an at least 15 minutes of time to have a deep and engaging conversation. You cannot have a very meaningful conversation in just like five minutes. Probably like an average of 15 minutes, at least an average of 15 minutes would be a good way to engage in a deep and meaningful conversation with other people who may not know what is it to look praise or who may not know what is it to use a sign language. Okay. And, and yes, it's nice to see the interpreters. Nice to see them virtually after meeting them face to face. Yes, Milad and Catherine and you all. Nice to see you in Zoom after meeting you face to face. <clears throat> it's always nice to meet people in real life after seeing them so often on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Emmanuel, you are good. Yes, I'm good. I'm, uh, uh, I was uh, so happy to see you guys. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you all join us uh, for uh, people who don't know I'm uh, from uh, Paris. I'm French. I'm, uh, I, I know uh, the sign language, but French uh, sign language, I don't know. Uh, about ISL and uh, ESL. So it uh, was fun uh, to communicate with uh, different uh, people with uh, different uh, sign language. And uh, we would communicate between us. It's very, very fun. It was very really fun. And uh, I was uh, so happy to see you, to communicate with you, to him. Uh, to participate uh, to a panel about accessibility. It was very interesting. And uh, the internet was incredible. We had a um, uh, sign uh, interpreter and uh, action. And uh, it was uh, totally accessible for everyone. It was fun. And yes, and a round of applause to Catherine for putting this all together. Wow. Thank I you. Mean, well, we all put it together, right? Like with a little guidance, but it was all a big teamwork. It was amazing. It was amazing the way you brought us all together as a group. It was wonderful. Yes, it was. It was wonderful. It was a lot of fun for me too. I mean, I'm, th these are the best parts of uh, KubeCon are like meeting everyone you collaborate with. And this group is particularly 
Et on a créé une chaîne à Milan, tout cette vidéo it was super cool. Ah, that oui, vidéo, oui. It was uh, awesome. The one that Milan did? Yes, it was awesome. So I have a link I, to that. I hope to do more videos and uh, maybe you can help me put those together. Yeah, I mean, it was really fun. I got that one feedback. It's like, uh, to be honest, I did not actually know what the boot is about. So probably like we can have like a briefing session about what we are going to do at the boot and something that would really help to set expectations. Okay, sure. Next time we'll do a little bit more prep. Maybe like a pre kubecon meeting with everyone who will be attending. Yeah, um, I would add to that, Catherine. Um, I guess Paris, before that we were in Chicago and um, we didn't really have a kiosk there like we did in Paris. Is that correct? Paris was the first time. Awesome. Okay. Our group didn't really exist a few months before Chicago. So Chicago was the first kind of like, we didn't even make the CFP was already closed. Uh, so yeah, it was like, what can we do? So we were late for everything because we were so new. So this November, we'll have a kiosk there as well. And going forward, especially in, in the North, like we're gonna be in Salt Lake City for the North American version coming up November. That's the idea. You always have to sign up because there are more people interested than actually uh, available slots. But I feel like in general, like uh, you have it, a lot of things are first come first serve. And I'm pretty sure I was the first one who signed up for the kiosk. So um, <laughs> it's just about keeping on top of stuff and being faster than the others uh, and signing up for everything. So it should work. Yeah. Um Right. Um, one thing I would say is in terms of working on um, the kiosk and the experience with all of that, the hearing people who came up to the kiosk. I felt like I had to kind of invite some of them over and to show them we, you know, that we were interested in talking to them and kind of invite them and engage them in discussion instead of just standing back and letting people come by because sometimes people would pass by and not say anything but if you engagingly invited them in and welcomed them in and that they would their expressions showed that they were interested in talking they just didn't know quite how to start the conversation and you know in the hearing world it's just a little bit different I think and that's just I don't know that's just my opinion it, it worked really well to engage them um okay so Feeling like nothing else to add, we can move on. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, blood is speaking, I'll wait. Go ahead, Cindy. No, Catherine, I actually wanted to ask you what feedback do you have for us? Let's ask from all of this, what feedback do you have for us to the yours or what we could have done better according to you? I think everyone did great. So, um, you know, it's all about engaging with the community and talking. Everyone was up for everything. So again, I signed this up for every single opportunity and I know it was a lot of work. <laughs> so no one complained. I was afraid people would be like, this is too much work. <laughs> but um, no, I think, I think everyone did great. You know, it's, it's all about exposure and meeting, hearing people, making allies. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but like in our, in the sign language crash course and the um, round table discussion, there were not a ton of people. I think we could have like, I think the CNCF could have done better by promoting that, but people were very engaged. And I feel that we've changed people's attitude towards accessibility, like, forever, you know, because it's like it might have been the first time people have met, you know, um, deaf people and 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 
just like hearing from from you what you need what's important you know and then suddenly it's not just like this i always say it's not an abstract concept anymore right accessibility normally if you if you don't know anyone it's just abstract it's like yeah i know it's important but it's just like this not not very close to you and once you meet people like yourself you're nice and you're friendly you're you know like and then they're like oh wow these are real people you know it's not abstract anymore and i think that changes attitudes and that's why i think all these activities are so important because like it's changing you know minds bit by bit every single cube you cannot talk to everyone because it's a small team twelve thousand people at kubecon i mean some people may not even have realized that people were there even though on the keynote states there was like uh a, like sign language interpreters and some people don't go don't attend the the, the keynotes right so uh it's it's slow but I think like if we do something similar every single KubeCon, I think we can actually change, help shape the community and make it more welcoming in general and sen sensibilize them to accessibility, not only for deaf people, but like for anyone, right? Because it's like deaf deafness is just one thing, but like uh, um, once you meet someone who's deaf, you're like, oh yeah, and what about all these other things? So I think that's, so I, th I really think it's really important work. So I think you all did a really, Great job, and I hope we can do this many more KubeCons. Maybe, um, it, I mean, from everything I saw on Slack since I wasn't there, it looked like you had some really great meetings and got some interest from new people, which was exciting to see. Uh, maybe next time for KubeCon, if there wasn't as much participation, you could uh, make a goal of inviting different groups that are, that you know will be there. I know there's a lot of groups that do mentorship or allyship. Um, so in since we're early now, instead of how it was in Chicago is developing a few key groups and inviting them at specific times to come by the, the booth and invite their members uh, of different organizations or different affiliations. That way there's a key list of targets to uh, invite to learn more. I think definitely awareness about um, those activities, like like help, like yeah, if, if we can work on it. Like, I was just assuming it's on the schedule and then people will just come, but there's so much stuff on the schedule and it's like, so uh, I wanted to talk to the CNCF to see like how they can promote it a little bit more because I feel it is important. But yeah, that's another idea, you know, like kind of promoting it among allies and groups that are uh, willing to help so they can, you know, um, let the word out and then have more people attend. That's a great idea. Hi, yes, I think so. Yeah, that's a very beautiful idea. And I think I don't have some specific groups in mind that we can invite, but then we have to see like if they are speaking at the same time, they may not be able to make it. So, but the, so maybe I think it's all about how we schedule. Okay. Terrific. I see. Um... We can, I think we can move on to the next thing. Um, deaf and cloud native. Um, it feels like it's kind of the same folks over and over and which is great, but I would like to see some and same topics over and over as well. And I would like to see some technical topics and some more variety in topics. So if we want to plan something for that and schedule it, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes at a time, um, that would be terrific and that'd be fine. Um, and then in the future, um, maybe more people will come than maybe just like one like Kubernetes talk. You know, I mean, I feel like we've all talked a lot about Kubernetes and maybe we could talk more other cloud native topics. And um, I, it'd be a wonderful experience um, to also improve our presentation skills and uh, practice for future conferences and future cube cons and um, have more deaf people on the stage there and give us an opportunity to practice. So if we'd like to 
have more practice sessions with feedback and um, improvements to presentations, et cetera, I think that'd be great ahead of the next KubeCon. So um, in deaf native, cloud native, that kind of thing. So I'd like to have one or two more people interested in doing that. Contact me if you are interested in doing that and we'll see about setting it up, okay? Um, thoughts, opinions, viewpoints about deaf and cloud native? If not, I'll move on. Catherine, uh, before I move on, anything? Anything to add? Okay. All right, moving right along. Um, Catherine, if you could take the next one. Yeah, so I created a PR tracker, uh, PR for public relations, not pull request. We had that <laughs> confusion before. Um, the link is in uh, the chat. Uh, so I want to just keep track of yeah, everything. Yeah, I was about to ask, but you, you had public relations. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, the idea is to add all the stuff that we, all the opportunities we have, uh, we get, right? Like all the videos, the talks, interviews, um, so we don't forget where they are uh, and then, uh, or that we've done them. And we also want to make sure that we promote them, right? We have like all these different talks now. Each talk is an opportunity to help raise awareness. And you, we've seen that a lot of our members came through LinkedIn post, right? And so you don't want to post the same thing over and over again, right? Instead, you know, like we can promote one talk and then talk about and then like mention the working group, you know? Um, so I think it would be great to promote one talk per week. Um, so we have um, several there. Uh, maybe we could start with one. The idea is for anyone in our group to do one. So it's not always the same people. I know Milan has been great uh, and promoting a lot of stuff. Rob has done it. It would be great to see other people doing it too. So, you know, because you have different networks and so on. So we're also sharing and content from different people as well. So um, yeah, please. I mean, I'm question here. Anyone who would like to do the first one? I can help as well if you want. Yes, Sandeep, you? Oh, yes, yes, I can okay. take it. Okay, so Sandeep is this week. Uh, you can pick something and then let's do next week too, since we're here. Who wants to do next week? Come on. I Jay. can. Great, great. And then we'll take it from there. Uh, and then you can also. Pardon? Good. Uh, OK, so uh, yeah, just go through the list and pick whatever, you know, and if you need help, let me know. And then don't forget to post it in our channel so everyone can see it uh, as well. Uh, and then if you haven't done so already, there are two things that we should share. One is the interview with Sandeep. Awesome, very great interview, got a lot of traction, has like over 250 likes or something. Um, let's make that even more. Um, and then uh, and then there's the recap video from Milat. Um, so do share those. And then, uh, yeah, uh, we have someone who just joined. Um, do you wanna say hi? Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm Shivangi. I just joined a bit late. So um, I introduced myself on the Slack channel and I um, gave the name. I'm a bit out of context, so still catching up. Okay. Well, welcome. Glad you made Thank it. You. So we have two people from India joining right now. So thank you for making it so late <laughs> it's it's not a uh, ideal time um any questions regarding promo public relations tracker i have a couple of questions but i think i'll okay. bring you a slack okay okay uh and then Next one is me as well. 
uh, so we did uh, have um, some feedback for the Linux Foundation events team. It's mostly focused on interpreters, the thing that I could think of. Uh, I think everything else went good, Like, but like if anyone wants to add something, uh, the link is in uh, on the agenda. Um, again, like it's always an opportunity to say like what they could do better and uh, yeah, so uh, have a look, uh, at least the people who were there, have a look and, and see if there is anything uh, you want to add. Um, and then the next one is actually something that Rob brought up. Um, I think we've talked about it uh, a few times, and that is like a sign language glossary for cloud native terms. Um, Basically, you being part of the community means that you are kind of shaping sign language, a technic technology sign language, right? Because it's like there aren't a lot of people here uh, um, besides you yet. Uh, and so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, first of all, like also to share it with interpreters for yourself when you're doing talks, like everyone. So we are all agree on the sign language it would be nice to have something where to find it. And so there is a CNCF glossary already, uh, which is explaining cloud native terms, uh, right? And then I think there are 13 languages. And so one thing could be where we just add another language. So you go, you can choose, you know, French, Chinese, whatever. You could do sign language and there is just the video. Uh, so um, in this, you see the screenshot with all the languages in, in the agenda, if you look at it, or I think even better for uh, accessibility is adding it, to, uh, not accessibility, for um, visibility, is making it part of the English glossary. And I made a little mock-up uh, where it's like you have agile software development in the one that I have, like you have the definition and underneath you have sign language and then I have an embedded video where you can see how it's signed. So. I actually like that even more just because when people are just looking for terms in English, then they're like, oh, look, sign language is like, oh, okay. So it's like, again, another way of discovering uh, that, uh, yeah, there is a need, there are deaf people in the community and so on. Um, so um, first of all, any thoughts about that in general? I have something. <laughs> um, I have a website and um, I have technical vocabulary and, and signs and English words there, but it's not a lot about Kubernetes at this point. And we could definitely add, um, you know, if you need help, you can look at the ASL um, glossary and you could look there and have those words for sure. So um, that's just a thought. You mean in addition or making it a CNCF thing as well? Or like just picking, because there are lots of yeah. places, right? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, we could discuss it as a team um, mm -hmm. and come up with the vocabulary words that we want to see used. Um, and then kind of come up with some common technical terms and check it out and then maybe change it based on what we're seeing with ASL and CNCF and you know develop it that way, make it kind of a dynamic process where we all get together and discuss it. But I'm wondering, I do have a question, CNCF, their glossary, do you mean they have one word and one sign is that what you're thinking? Or are you thinking about it? their glossary explains what the words mean? I don't really follow what you meant by the glossary. No, so there is a glossary and uh, I know it's hard to, uh, so you can check it out later because I know it's hard to look at the glossary and participate in the conversation. But uh, so it's a glossary that explains cloud native terms. And that's actually a project that I started um, two, three years ago. I don't know, whenever oh, I started. Okay. So yeah, so that is to explain cloud native term, right? Like what is a cluster? Um, what is a container, right? And then, so 
And that thing has grown into, so we have lots of different teams and this is like also it's open source and you have the French team, like uh, for instance, um, uh, Anastasia on the keynote, she shared the keynote with one guy who was part of the French localization team. So you have like all these different teams uh, translating it into their languages. So you have English and then you have 13 or more because there may be other languages that are not public published yet working on uh, translating that into different languages. So what I like about that is it is that it is a CNCF uh, non-code open source project. So it's another opportunity for members to become contributors, right? And so I think there are two ways of doing it. Uh, it could be either, um, so it's a little different because we don't need to explain what it is in sign language. People can read the English description to learn what a container is. Um, um, our glossary is to show how to sign it. And so there are two ways of doing it. One in the drop down where you have the 13 languages, there could be one where you look sign language and I would just put sign because it's not ASL or whatever it should, because we all said we want those to be global, right? And then you, you, for each term, you have a video where you can see how it's signed. Um, for that, I mean, that's kind of nice to have it all there. It's not very discoverable for hearing people if we want awareness and visibility. So what I like even more is just adding a section in, into the English glossary, which is the one that is used most, right? So you are looking for containers and then you have an explanation, what is container, blah, blah, blah. And at the end you have an embedded video and this, and this is how you sign it, right? And then so people who are looking, uh, want to know what is container, and they're like, oh, look at that. There's a video about, you know, maybe they even learn how to sign containers. I don't know. So it's an additional kind of way for hearing people to see that deaf people are part of the community. So uh, that's what I like about that. And then, so that is good. And the other thing that's good is that already, the glossary has already determined several works that are important for cloud native. So we don't have to come up with, oh, what are all the terms that need science, right? So, cause you, we go there and it's, again, like cloud native technology, cluster, container orchestrator, contain, like you, you can just go through, through it cause some teams have already thought about what is important. And then uh, it would only be a matter of creating uh, the videos only in uh, quotation marks. Cause of course it, easier set than that. But. Does that make, make sense? Like, is it clear what it's supposed to be? Yeah, oh yeah, clear, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it's clear. Um, I hope it is for everybody else. Yeah, Jay says yes. Yeah, and what I really like about this again is because we have we have you and Anastasia, you Milad and Anastasia, who are the co-host of the Deaf and Cloud Native Deaf, uh, like the community groups is an entity in our community. And there are lots of people who are uh, co-organizers of community groups, right? And you are the ones who do the Deaf and Cloud Native meetup. So it is something that already exists, right? And then we have lots of different teams working on the glossary, the CNCF glossary, because it's this non-code open source project. And then it would be great to have another glossary team, you know, like maybe two leads who kind of do that. I think the videos ideally would be from lots of different people, right? Like, so, um, but it would be great to have maybe two leads who, uh, and this is a pitch to this group, <laughs> like if anyone is interested, you know, like say like, hey, I would love to do that. And you're, you're basically taking ownership of that little project and ensuring uh, and kind of, yeah, like, like, trying to drive the conversation, how should we sign container? And then of course it shouldn't be a discussion between the two people. It should be a discussion with everyone. Maybe there is something already, but then say like, okay, this is this is the term, uh, who will record it, like manage the whole thing and then create the PR, uh, the pull request this time <laughs> and uh, ensure, and, and yeah, just, just um, so that the video is added to uh, the glossary. And then we would have, two co-chairs, two deaf co-chairs, two deaf uh, co-hosts of meetups and two deaf glossary, uh, you know, sign language glossary owners. So then we would have more people owning different things. And that again is, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
three steps. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's also like with the interviews, right? At KubeCon, uh, like one of the pitches or the reason why uh, me Milad and Anastasia, I pushed a lot them because it's like, hey, last time we were pushing the co uh, the co chairs of the working group. Then like this is like, hey, do you want to meet the co the organizers of the community meet and then um, the community group? And then this is another thing we can say like, hey, these are uh, the glossary maintainers, uh, the like the sign language glossary maintainers, you know, like the people leading that project. So it, it gives us an opportunity to talk about different things as well um, by participating in different parts of the ecosystem that already exist but now for sign language or for deaf or for, you know, like something specific to our community. Okay. I hope that glossary, um, maybe the working group can um, talk about how to do that, get a few deaf folks involved in creating that. That sounds really cool. So anybody who's really into that, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more as we go forward. And Andrew just said, I'll join it. Who said that? Sorry, I didn't see. Andrew. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, I would definitely join that. Yeah, and Jay said, me too. Okay, yeah, we can do you wanna get it so, started? Yes, that's cool. Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk about this more offline. I can tell you which Slack channels to join and so, ever, uh, so, uh, so on. But I, I mean, that would be awesome. And again, like you would be leading that effort. You wouldn't be doing it all on your own. It's just like Milad and Anastasia are doing the meetup, but they're not making all the presentations, right? So the videos, I think it's important that we have like videos of different people as well. So it's like, so um, you could do the first ones and then, uh, but yeah, uh, it, it it's it, it's great to see different faces. Uh, um, so people see there are different people who are part of uh, the community as well. But yeah, thank you. I was hoping to get volunteered. <laughs> that was my goal for this meeting. Cool. Yeah, and I think I have one last thing. Uh, yeah, there's one thing left. Yeah, about the Zoom improvement and accessibility. Do you, you wanted to comment on that, Catherine? Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, a few months ago, we met with the Zoom accessibility team because um, um, as you probably know, uh, at least Rob was saying, um, Teams is a lot better in terms of accessibility. There are a lot of issues with Zoom, but Zoom has much better, um, the streaming is much better. So a lot of deaf people use Zoom and Teams at the same time, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and so we did talk to Zoom, uh, created a doc with recommendations. Then someone left and then, because I've followed up a few times and said like, so what's going on? Are we, are we implementing it or not? But they had to leave. Uh, uh, well, they, they left and then someone else came in and then someone did add comments in the document. And I just wanted to be sure, like, can you have a look? Is, is that stuff that was already there? Uh, should it be improved? Like, I mean, we have their email addresses and I'm happy to bug them until they are sick of me and then <laughs> and it hopefully implemented. But like, have a look because it's like, I mean, you're using Zoom often, I assume, and the better it is, uh, the better, the easier it is uh, to work virtually. So um, please have a look and see if you see or find the improvements, if that's something you knew about, is it new or not? Because I have no idea really if if it's stuff that was already there and that's not exactly what we meant. And uh, if not, or if there is anything missing, I'm happy to kind of, you know, bug them again and say like, hey, this is really important uh, and just see if whether they get it implemented or not, I don't know, but they do have a team that is dedicated to accessibility, so they should better listen to people who need accessibility. At least that's my opinion. If not, they should look for a different job. <laughs> that's it for me. Yes, and um, 
somebody had a question um, about the glossary in terms of um, somebody was talking about the glossary. Hi. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> I'm going to try to join this real quick. I'm, I'm working right now, so I'm um, hi. <laughs> I'm just coming in really quickly. Um, great to see you. Um, there are lots of glossaries that are already in existence. And I'm just wondering if any of you guys are involved with those at all in the ASL core, that is one, and it might be able to link to them. Yeah, um, Malad's saying, what Catherine was just saying is that um, the CNCF has a um, glossary for their different terminology. And um, there's not a lot of available platforms that have such glossaries for their specific terminology. For example, I would say um, the inference, the word, for example, um, there's no real sign for it. You know, we have to um, create a term for that or we have to expand on that and explain what it means and um, in terms of cloud native um, relationships. So uh, Catherine, I don't know if you, if you have other thoughts on that. Well, I, I don't know. My my thought was just to create something that is an additional CNCF, like contribute to a CNCF pro an existing contribute uh, contribute to an existing CNCF project um, to have another additional way of participating in the ecosystem. Right. I think if there are different glossaries, probably it would make sense to add those like the same video or contribute those as well back, but it would be nice to have this within the ecos uh, the CNCF kind of documentation. Um, again, also for visibility. But I think like we shouldn't, um, I mean, the more places these things live, the better, right? Like if you have one video, like again, just to have the container example, right? Like if maybe that same video can go, can be contributed to the other glossaries because different people use different glossaries. We don't only have one diction, English dictionary, right? People have lots of different English dictionaries and they all have the same explanation or similar explanation. So uh, it's not about having one only, right? Or it's like, if we can just, you know, like distribute them as much as possible, that, that way more people can discover the cloud native terms and other glossaries as well. And Nicole, it is already an existing uh, project. So it's just piggybacking on that one. It's the CNCF. It's an open source project. And right. I'm responding to the Slack channel. <laughs> and I think as a team, we can certainly volunteer to help that, um, put, put ourselves in the mix on that. All right, I think, Catherine, we've covered everything. Is there one more thing that you wanted to cover or is that it? All right, so we've got like four minutes left. Um, anything from anyone here, questions, comments, thoughts, anybody have any last closing things they want to say in the last four minutes? Uh I thought Zoom is better than Google Meeting and Teams, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll check out the link in the recommendation. Yeah, because... I think. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I just thought that uh, in the Google Meeting, the screen sharing is not at all intuitive. In Zoom, the screen sharing is very intuitive. In Google Meeting, it's not at all good. So I thought Zoom is much better, but I'll check the recommendations and then let you know. Yeah. Well, just have a look at the document because I remember that like we did like this is what Teams has. So it's Teams, not Google Meets, by the way. So Teams has, and this is what Zoom lacks kind of. Maybe there are other things in other views and maybe there are other things where Zoom outperforms teams um but yeah have a look because that was i think a lot of the input came from rob 
uh, and a few other people, we were much smaller at the time. Uh, so we didn't have as many members either. Okay, I don't have much experience of using Teams. Uh, I mean, we use Teams on every number of things, but that is only for chat. We don't, I mean, Teams is just used for chatting with each other. We don't use Teams as an audiovisual resource. Yeah. Well, Shivangi, nice of you to turn up. Yeah, so everyone, ah, uh, Shivangi, I met her in Detroit in like October 2022. Oh. And oh. she's the only friend I still carry from that conference to this Yupkan. Very yeah. nice. It's really like nice when nice. we have submitted like quite a number of talks together. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, Sandeep is uh, like the person because of whom I could understand, okay, like how uh, lack of uh, like accessibility is uh, hindering people to attend uh, multiple talks at KubeCon, right? And that is when uh, I noticed, okay, this is also something which needs to be looked at. And after I saw Sandeep's talk, I, I came across, okay, this is uh, a group which uh, is something I might be interested in and I can contribute. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, Wonderful. Um. We have a minute left and um, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for being part of the meeting. And uh, I think we got through the agenda. And um, anyway, nice to meet you all. It's nice to see you. See you soon. Great. Have a great day. Thank you.